Eli Knight here. I'm with the beautiful and lovely Anya, and um, I've got an idea for a video for you today. It's something I haven't really addressed necessarily, but it's something that everybody really looks for at all levels of the game. We're talking today about sweep and submission combos. Not necessarily sweep to submission, but maybe submission to sweep. So I'll give you some examples. Um, this is by no means, this is, this is an infinite list, so I'm only going to do like maybe seven of these today just to kind of give you an idea of how these things work together and something that if you are already incorporating these things together, maybe you haven't looked at the same way, but um, if you haven't thought about these th this way, then maybe these are some things that you can start to play with. I'm going to start off very basic with um, one that I find a lot of use out of and it works at every level of the game if the timing is on point, and it's going to be this arm crunch idea. The arm crunch essentially, or the squidigatami or whatever, I have a whole video on this, but the way I want to address it today is looking at how we can start to elicit a response and tie this arm crunch together as a submission itself, but then also based off of her reaction, her defense to it, how it can incorporate into the sweep and vice versa. So if we're starting from kind of a butterfly uh, sweep setup here like this, I want to start to take her offline. Now, a standard butterfly sweep just to present this so that she knows kind of what I'm looking for here. If my timing is good, of course, I'll hit it, but I'm going to be kind of catty corner like this. I'm going to have a collar tie on her and I want to be somewhere between the elbow and wrist, either elbow, double uh, connection here like this, or I can just punch the wrist straight in. So if I'm going here like this, as I start to do the sweep, I'm going to take my shoulder to the floor and my foot is going to go up this way here, creating the sweep opportunity to here this way. I might land in kind of a knee cup position. I might land in the mount. Um, it all a little bit depends on the timing, how perfect it was, and also um, her, what her resistance was like. So if we're here like this and I start to sweep her out to the side, she posts that arm. Now, because she's created this new pillar of support here like this, I'm gonna reach through it, I'm gonna scoop this up, and I'm gonna pull it back with me here this way. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going above the elbow around the tricep tendon, I'm gonna start to like pull my hands together, pulling this arm that I'm wrapping with to my far side shoulder. So then from here, as I start pulling this over and across this way, then I've got this crunch. Now, very important thing here is that I keep her off center, so I'm looking at the side of her head. If she can start to bring her head back over me, then she's going to start to resist this. But as it is right now, I'm bringing it here. I can use the knee for an assist, and I pinch her wrist between my ear and shoulder, and I get the submission right here. Right Now, if Anya go, goes to resist this here, whenever I start to sweep, I go here, I start to pull this arm up, and then she starts to drive her weight back over me. Now, from that reaction, I keep the crunch on the arm, but now this secondary arm over here, this way, I'm going to use that as a leverage point under her neck, and I'm going to keep my head offline because I know that's the angle that I need to be able to start to create that sweep opportunity here. Once we sweep, I might be able to even maintain this all the way over to the mount, and then that's going to allow me maybe to continue to attack the arm, attack it in a different way, or even start working things like head and arm control that lead to more uh, submission opportunities from a new position. Her resistance to my primary thing, whether it's a sweep or a submission, is going to elicit some kind of other response. She can't shut me down over here without giving me new opportunities on this side over here. Um, another good one, another classic example is the scissor sweep, one of the most basic first sweeps that you ever learn. But again, the only reason that uh, we ever call it basic is because the, the actual mechanisms in place of it. You can hit the most basic move on the most advanced person if the timing is well, is well enough executed. So from here, whenever we get to this position, um, again, if, it's caught, if we have the gi, I can get grips on her here like this, but the way we're gonna look to do a scissor sweep no gi is again, either by the elbow here like this, just above it where my hand is on her elbow, or possibly here by the wrist. But I'm still gonna use this collar tie type of uh, uh, connection to her upper body. When my knee first comes in and I get my angle off to the side, it's gonna be more center to the chest. And then as I go to sweep here like this, I'm trying to bring her head over her elbow. My leg is gonna to start to drape down and my knee is gonna go more horizontal. I'm gonna pull her up over her foundation, her foundation over her base, and then I'm gonna scissor the two legs here like this and pull myself over and on top, typically on this one, sweeping to mount. Now, the way that this lends itself oftentimes to um, different submission opportunities is like this. Sometimes as I start to hip out to the side, then I'll bring my knee over this way and I'll jam her arm in against her. Because she feels like she's threatened here more for the sweep than she is for the submission, oftentimes she doesn't like how the, this arm is jammed up, so she'll start to retract it. As she does, she actually helps pull my leg out of place, and then that's going to pull my hips underneath her to be able to set up a nice triangle. I've already got her elbow penetrating past her, her head like this. I'm gonna close up my figure of four here like this. My knees are pointed the same way. I crunch down and I finish my triangle choke that direction. Now the triangle is an interesting one because 
um, whenever we start to set up the triangle choke, oftentimes one of her ways that she'll try to initially start uh, defending this is by stacking me up. As she goes to stack me up here like this, the pressure oftentimes can uh, really fight against me. So you notice that she's stacking and, and placing this knee here. So she's getting in line with my spine and creating the structure that's really hard for me to finish this because my core is really compromised. So at this point here, there's a couple different options I can look to do. One is I can transfer around and just go straight into the arm bar over here. And yes, it's okay to cross your ankles on this one. So I can get the arm bar to here like this, or I can open my hips up and get past that line of her support over here and then start to sweep her with this flower type sweep. And often the result of that here off that flower sweep is that she lands right back into that arm bar type position. So again, now we have this kind of check, this uh, whole chain of events going from uh, triangle to, to flower sweep to arm bar. And sometimes those pieces are interchangeable all the way through. Likewise, if I were to start to set up the arm bar straight from guard, Right? One of the main things that I need to do is to get her elbow underneath her chin so that these are in line with each other. Then I'm gonna to start to jump up and capture that shoulder. Once I get her elbow tucked in, that shoulder protrudes. So now I can hook onto that, lock in this way, and then eventually I can hip over here and start to get my basic kind of arm bar from the guard. Now, oftentimes here, the same thing happens. She starts to go here and she starts to stack up like this. So as she's stacking, I'm hooking my arm underneath her base and then from there now, I can either push through her head with this top one, or I can open the hips if I feel like I've got the elbow secured well enough to be able to complete, again, that flower sweep that pulls her over onto her side. And then now the arm is exposed once again after that flower sweep straight into the arm bar. Going back to the butterfly idea, we looked at the, one of the first things was we looked at the butterfly where she starts to post her arm out and how I can get access to that arm. Sometimes my, she posts a little bit later and it spreads her body out farther, maybe not as conducive to the arm, uh, to the arm crunch, but it does give the other opportunity on the lower half of her body. So if we're going here and I'm starting to sweep way over here like this, now she's posted out and I've got this other leg floating here, right? So my, I can ride my momentum that I created by continuing to duck underneath her. I can switch my hand grip to the inside of her lap. And then as I spin underneath this way, that's bringing me in line with this knee. So now I pull through and then I'm gonna continue to push her back over this direction. As I get her uh, to fall over to her side, I'm crossing my two legs. I'm pinching in and pulling my heels in through her butt. I'm hugging up high on her Achilles tendon. I'm pinching her foot here between my ear and shoulder. And now I can bring the second hand inside, hip into her knee and continue that rotation. So that it's got that full extension of the knee uh, on the knee bar like that. So one more time on this one, whenever we get to this position and I start to butterfly sweep, but then here she starts to post out wide, and so as I come through, I pull in and I bring her up and over this direction. I've got a connection here, I get that nice bite, I get her foot between my ear and shoulder, I hold onto her heel and then I hip in for the knee bar like that. We're talking about other basic sweeps, so we looked at a, a kind of a basic uh, scissor sweep, we looked at a basic butterfly sweep and how those can lead into other submission opportunities. So even if they scout it out because it is basic or the timing was simple, then um, I'm still able to complement it and, combo it with these other submissions. So another one that's like that too, and I think that uh, also remains a really good sweep from day one until forever, is the hip bump sweep. The hip bump sweep can be very basic as far as if she sits up and makes like a gross error by putting her hands down like this, or it can be one where I'm holding her down and she starts to sit up to posture and I ride up with her. As we look to do that, I'm gonna post my arm behind my back. I'm gonna transfer this arm over to the other side and I'm gonna cup and push her bicep against me so that she doesn't have that opportunity to post out. And so once that happens, now I drive over and then I make this sweep. And again, one of the most simple, mechanically simple sweeps that there is in the whole game, but it's something Something that stays pretty well evolved for every aspect or every level of the game as well. So um, different reactions that she can look to have from this is as we go here and she starts to set us up like this and I start to come up, I start to post. Whenever I start to go here and I get my arm to the other side, but then she wants to shut this down, she'll tackle back into me. Now, if my hips stay close to her, she'll successfully tackle me back to the floor like this and then she shuts my sweep down. But uh, however, if she tackles and I slide back here like this, she actually creates this horizontal plane and that gives me access to sweep underneath like this to be able to get uh, wrapped up around her neck here for the guillotine. 
So what I'm doing on the guillotine, I'm bringing this all the way through. And it may often happen that her arm is still pressed against me because she tackled back into me. So it's okay for me to go around her arm. The way I'm gonna look to finish that from here is I'm gonna cup in, I'm gonna reinforce and stack my hands this way. And then I'm gonna cut back to an angle here this way to get my feet up. Right? And then I start to squeeze and crunch in. What's happening is as I come up, it's a sweep and she tackles. I'm scooting my butt back underneath her to get that horizontal plane. I'm going to wrap through. I'm going to cup my hand on this side. So I'm creating this divot here where I'm grabbing my hand. I'm cupping in and squeezing. And so then I fall over to the side of her head and I actually pull in with my two feet and my legs to be able to get that crunch. And it's a really sharp guillotine off of that. And it's extra powerful because she tackled and pushed her head back into the pocket to allow me to get that. On this hip bump sweep, whenever I do uh, get over here and I'm, she tackles back into me, just like for the uh, guillotine before, sometimes I'll get here to the guillotine, but what's happening is that in response to it, when I bring this underneath, she'll bring her hand up to defend by pulling my hand down and away from her neck. It's the most immediate response for defense that somebody will throw up. And it's actually a correct response because she wants to defend against that. So as she does that and she's pulling, I wanna play a little bit of a tug of war game. And so she pulls and then I let go. And as she, as she lets go, or as I let go, I see my hand come up underneath her shoulder and I can either gable grip or go full rear naked choke style grip here like this. And then I wanna take her over to this side. Oftentimes that's going to require me to shrimp this way here to start removing the post out of the way. Now, once I go to make that sweep, I'm allowing my foot to stay in between her two legs. The reason for that is because she has one exit route right now where she can take her right arm through between our two bodies and, and continue to rotate to her left side. But as she does that here, I'm going to sit up, create this opening under her body, slide my knee in this way, make the arm switch, come back around the neck, and then I've successfully taken her back. Now, there's a few steps involved in this, so let's look at it one more time real quick. So as I come up to make the sweep here, I do the correct thing by taking my arm across, but she defends, I go back and try from my guillotine. Now, I really wanna sell it to her, so she really defends. I let go, I come either gable grip or rear neck and choke style grip. I start to sweep her over to the side, and I allow my foot to stay in between. She starts to exit out to that side, I come here and I pick the elbow up. I drive my knee here underneath. I switch the two arms so I can get my seatbelt recovered. And then I come in and I have her back. Now, um, something else that's really cool to see, um, and it almost requires me to deliberately mess up the sweep sometimes, but that's part of the trap, is that whenever we get to this hip bump sweep, if I fail to get my, uh, my arm to the other side, so I go here, and instead of transferring this over like I'm supposed to, I actually just try to complete the sweep here. She'll post this arm out. Now, in doing so, she has she shut down my sweep because she created a new pillar of support, but she's created a new opening. And what I'm gonna look to do is I'm gonna try to climb my leg up, and so I'm gonna hang on her back with my first leg and shoot my second leg up and over this way. As I fall back, she's already almost locked into the triangle with just a little bit of adjustment. I'm gonna go ahead and get my triangle like that. So one more time on this one here, as she sets us up here this way, I go for my sweep, she posts out. Instead of just throwing this up and around, I'm gonna climb one here like this so it's a little closer. Then I'm gonna shoot through and she's already pretty tight into the triangle. I'm gonna to to scoop myself underneath her to get the better angle. And then I'm gonna complete my triangle right here. Should be a nice tight one. And again, un unexpected because she was reacting to my sweep primarily, and by the time she re realizes the triangle is there, she's already mechanically two moves behind. Right. One that uh, we can look at as well is from half guard. And again, there's lots of different types of these, especially when you're getting into deep half guard and all those games. But one that I think uh, really sticks out in my mind when I start thinking about sweep submission combos is the electric chair. The electric chair essentially will generally start from a lockdown type position of half guard, right? So from lockdown, that's where my inside leg is hooked under, my outside leg comes through, and I have this kind of almost figure of four, but it's lower down on the calf like this, and I'm just keeping her legs stretched out. She's got a really good underhook established as well as she's underneath my head, and so this is a good way for me to try to get rid of this when I can't get my double unders on her. So as we're here like this, I'm gonna start to stretch this way, and I'm gonna start to swing her leg out to the side. As we do that, I'm driving, and I'm trying to shove her over out of the way. So now I've, I've already essentially cleared her uh, underhook that she had on me, and I'm gonna start to reach down and scoop underneath her leg on this side. Once I come here, I'm hugging up nice and high by the knee on this, direct, this direction over here. Um, I like this wrist-to-wrist -wrist 
tight grip here like this because it's very strong. If I get here and I come up to my elbow and I extend my two legs and hold here, oftentimes I can get like a split here for a submission. And I'm, uh, if you're not very flexible, this is definitely a submission because it's extremely painful, right? But as we get here this way, I start to take the knee to the ground and stretch her out. If I'm not getting the submission, I can continue the movement up to the top for the sweep. So essentially I just look down and allow this to come in front of the head and now I scoop up and I'm gonna come here, try to get high by her trap or at least by her hip, depending on the size of the person. And once we come to the top position, I keep that top leg smothered down. I might be able to replace and get this small cradle and continue the pressure and try to get the submission again from here. Even if I don't get the submission, it's gonna allow me the ability to unlock that lock down and get to this, uh, this uh, far side cradle like this at the end position. And I've gotten a really good pass off of it. So, the electric chair is one of those where it's kind of hard to tell where the sweep ends and the submission begins and vice versa. So guys, I hope that you got something out of these sweep and submission combos. These are ones that I use to this day and I've been using for years and years and I keep on finding new details all the time that whenever I train with much better people and they are able to give me some kind of little tidbit. And that's kind of the whole point of why I make it in these videos because if you can get some little detail out of these, even if you've been using these forever, then it's worth it to me to help show that and share that with you. Uh, anyway, let me know which ones you like to use and uh, you can leave me a comment down below and let me know what's your favorite of these or what's your favorite that I left out of the list. And anyway, keep on watching, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff, and I appreciate it, guys.